3.8 volts. Okay, that's not too bad. It's in the middle of the red, a little bit less than the middle of the red. As you can see, this this battery shows it's got about a thousand cr cranking amps. <laughs> The Battery Restoration, Chapter 1, Lead Acid Battery General Information. In the average lead acid car battery, golf cart battery, or variations like sealed batteries, the standard electrolyte solution is 35% sulfuric acid and 65% distilled water. My belief is the acid works on the lead in the plates and causes electricity to be released when demanded. When this release occurs, it leaves behind a sulfation layer. If the battery is charged up within a short period of time, this sulfation layer is converted back into acid by the electricity applied to the battery. So the common belief is that if you leave your lights on or drain your car battery, a soft sulfation layer is formed, and this can be restored by jumping the car and having the alternator charge up the battery and remove this sulfation layer. But if you leave the battery dead and discharged for a long period of time, like weeks or months, then a hard sulfation layer will form and it is impossible to remove it by charging. Each cell in a lead acid battery that is full capacity will be slightly over 2.1 volts DC. So if you count the cells and it's 12 volt, it will be 6 cells. The battery voltage will drop as its capacity is used. Most of the starting problems in a car are because the battery posts are dirty and getting, good, getting a good connection will cause your car not to start. If the battery electrolyte or water is lower than the top of the plates, which is usually caused by your alternator putting out too much voltage and boiling off the water, it also won't start. A battery post cleaning brush will need to be used on most cars at least once a year to clean the post back down to a clean lead finish like this. Okay, I don't have much hope for this battery. Uh, let's measure the voltage first. And we're measuring the voltages 210, 2.1, right? Electrolyte's fairly clear and it's not the bulb isn't coming off the bottom. There, it just came off the bottom slightly, but you can see it's not even close to being in the red. This battery is dead as a doornail. The electrolyte looks a little muddy here. Chapter 2, Battery Assessment and Testing. The first thing to do when testing a battery is to have a good voltmeter and hydrometer. The multimeters can be had for around $20 or a little more at Home Depot or $6 at Harbor Freight and will be very helpful when diagnosing electrical problems in cars and with alternating current in homes. The hydrometers are less than $10. The one you're looking at costs $6 at the auto parts place. A battery can have the full 12.8 volts but have a low hydrometer reading indicating no actual capacity. Although if it won't start the car you can tell it doesn't have the required capacity also. For restoration projects it helps to be able to monitor the progress with a hydrometer and multimeter. First check the voltage and then check each cell with the hydrometer levels and clean the top of the battery and clean the battery post so you get a good connection with the charger. Look for cracked cases, bulged cases, indicating the sulfation has pushed the plates out and deformed them. Pop the caps off the top of the battery and examine the electrolyte levels. If the water is low, add distilled to at least a quarter inch above the lead plates. Voltmeter's running at 17.32 uh, volts. Put it on the uh, 40 amp boost rate, which is why it's so high. 
and it's only running in about uh, 4 amps at this point. You can see it starting to equalize and boil the electrolyte off though and some of the cells are not doing anything and others are starting to function. A lot of times it'll take hours and hours before you can start it to even get going. We're going to call it number six. Chapter three, battery restoration. A car alternator cannot restore battery to full capacity because it cannot reverse sulfation as its maximum voltage is usually 13.5 to 14.5 volts and it's not enough to get to a state of equalization which is around 16 volts on a 12 volt battery. Charging a battery up will not restore its capacity unless it includes an equalization charging. So a trickle charger, a 2 amp charger, or any charger that will not get the battery to 16 volts after extensive charging will have little effect on a hard sulfation and as such will not restore the battery's capacity. There are three ways to remove the sulfation from my research and they are as follows. 1. Battery equalization. This technique has been used by off-grid solar system owners for a long time to preserve the life of their expensive lead acid batteries, some of which cost in excess of $3,000. I mean for the whole battery bank it would be $3,000. If you had 12 batteries and they were $350 a piece, you'd be spending a lot of money on the batteries. And considering their, their average life is five years, you do everything you can not to spend the money every five years. The charger or solar panels are applied to the battery to get it to the required voltage to start to see the cells gassing and boiling, which will be above 15 volts on a 12 volt battery. Of course, high voltages will push electricity into a lower voltage battery and sometimes high currents will also be pushed in. This causes heat and heat must be avoided. If the battery gets warm, that is fine, but stop charging and let it cool down if it gets hot, as if it gets too hot it can destroy the battery. The equalization will eventually get to the point where the voltage is high but amperage is very low like less than two amps and almost no heat is produced. This process may be continued for many hours to get the best results. Two, the battery can have chemical additives like the old VX6 or the modern Charge It or Battery Equalizer, which are products that have aluminum sulfate or cadmium sulfate in them to cause the sulfation to be removed. I've used alum or aluminum sulfate. The last system for desulfation is using a high frequency stimulator to remove sulfation from the batteries. Here you can see the infinitum that I have. It's got a red LED light on it and when the battery voltage gets up above uh, 12 then it um, turns to green as you can see. I've had a couple of the $35 desulfonators using high frequency and my impression is that they have little effect. Others have had good success with them. Initially, if the battery is completely dead and has sat for a long time, I would use a high amperage voltage charge to start it going and it may take hours to get going. Any reading on the charger showing some amperage is be being delivered to the battery is where it's going to be starting to charge. And you can see in this particular case the charger has started to get up to 10 amps. If it won't take a charge I would use jumper cables to a good known battery and start the charger charging for 15 minutes and disconnect it and see if it will charge, start charging on its own. Some chargers won't charge a battery it can't see and often it can't see a battery with less than four volts. Once it starts charging, I would lower the amperage setting and let it go for eight hours or so and see what voltage it'll eventually get up to and what the hydrometer readings it gets to for each cell are. I would take my dead battery and charge it up initially to as high as it will go and then do two cycles where I discharged it down to 10 volts and recharged it to get as much of the sulfation converted as possible. 
After it has been restored to its best possible state through the cycle, the voltage should get to around 12.8 volts, and the hydrometer should get to about 1250. And a testing on the, on the car will show if its capacity is okay or not. I mean, you should be able to start the car easily. You can see the Harbor Freight's fairly accurate. They're both 16.91 and 16.97. Six here that was dead as a doornail is that it did not come back to life completely. As you can see, the voltage here is 12.99, which is almost 13. It's been sitting for several days, and it hasn't come down less than that, so that's pretty good. But voltage doesn't mean everything. The um, hydrometer shows that the level is at just in the green, which is also pretty good, and it tests like that pretty much straight across. But we're going to show you what the uh, cold cranking amp draw is. Okay, here we have the cold cranking amp draw. As you can see, it's close to 13 volts, and when I put the draw on, it goes down to 200. Well, 200 is not going to start a car, ever. So it doesn't matter if the voltage is up at 13, you know, although it just took the surface charge off. But if, it, if it'll rest at 13, that doesn't mean anything. If the capacity isn't there, it's not going to start a car. You need about 600 to start the car. So this battery is not coming back. It, it's come back remarkably considering it had nothing to start with and it sat for years. It has come back remarkably in that regard. But it did not come back enough to be serviceable as a battery. battery here was uh, is, uh, from um, 04. August of 2004. We're going to load test it. Sitting in the pile for a bunch of years. It's running at uh, 12 point, looks like 3 volts, 4 volts. And when I put the tester on it, it's over 600 cold crank amps. So that's good. This is from 04. This battery here. It's currently at about yeah, 12.8. We hit the load tester. You can see that it it's running about 800. It's taking some of the surface charge and keeping it on dropping, but it's sticking at about above 600. So that battery is good. So in the last battery in the line there, this one here is uh, from 2000, I think. you can see it's like it's staying up at well it's dropping a little bit but it's around 600 this is enough to start the car okay and the interstate on the end number four there I'll load test it it's dropping dropping it's just taking some of the surface charge off but you see it has settled out and it is still staying at about 900 gold cranking amps. So, plenty of juice in that battery. All four of these batteries were restored from a junk pile where they'd been sitting for three to five years, and they're all around uh, 2000, 2002, 2004. They're old batteries that started out life at like three or four volts, and anywhere from no hydrometer reading to um, low in the red. And they've all been restored to a battery that will crank a car from using uh, equalization and sometimes Epsom salt and sometimes aluminum sulfate. So it's not impossible to take a battery that has a hard sulfation on it and have it come back to life. Those batteries did not revive.